All right, all right, all right. Hello and welcome. Welcome to live streams. You right now at uh, Confluent YouTube channel. It's Tuesday. It's uh, 12 p.m. here in New York and welcome to live streams. My name is Victor Gamov and today we're going to be doing something special. Holiday special with uh, some holiday spirit. And that's why I'm wearing this, this, um, this beard. Not super comfortable, but hey, it's going to be awesome live streams. Stay with me today and code with me today and we will be. Let's do this. Roll the footage. All right, all right, I made it. I almost made it. Anyways, so that's much easier, much much easier to talk. So let me actually remove everything. So yeah, that would be more comfortable for me, comfortable for you, and we're gonna be doing this stuff as we always do. Welcome to live streams. My name is Viktor Gamov, and uh, this is the weekly show where we're talking about stream processing. We're talking about a little bit of uh, Kafka streams, KSQL, cloud, and all things that you folks want to talk about. And uh, today, as announced, uh, we're going to be doing a special episode where um, you also get to code with me, if you'd like. If you'd like, you can code with me today. Uh, today is going to be a longer episode. We're going to be uh, bringing some of the big uh, application here. We're going to be building a... Um, the movie ratings uh, processor application that would know that what's going to be our the most the popular uh, popular Christmas movie. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. If you're the first time here, if you're first time, if you've never seen this before, there's a nice button called uh, subscribe. Click the subscribe button and subscribe to Confluent YouTube channel. We're doing uh, weekly live streams where we're going to be talking about some cool stuff. And we're also posting some of the cool videos about Kafka and uh, stream processing. And this is just in general a great place to, uh, to learn stuff. All right, so let's see. Let's see how we, how many people we have here. So we do have some. All right, all right. Hello, everyone. Um, again, if you're first time here, if you're first time here, let me know where we're coming from. Um, if you've never seen, uh, never been in this live stream, we usually, um, you know, when we're joining, we're saying hi, and after that, we're saying where we're coming from. That's great to know uh, the uh, uh, geography of our of our stream. Wow, this beard was super hot and it was uh, not uh, super easy to breathe, but I thought you guys worth it, <laughs> me to um, dress up. Um, as you know, uh, previously, previously, some time ago, a couple weeks ago, maybe last months ago, I don't remember, like everything looks like, um, um, like every, it's the same, like every day is like the same. Uh, but we did this uh, live stream where we were talking about uh, stream processing and we did this workshop um, and uh, we got, it's pretty good success and the people were like super excited and super hyped about um, this and we said okay so let's do another holiday special and today we're going to be doing another holiday special um, not the same content I try to create something new so you will learn something new and uh, before we jump in let me see where the people coming from all right um, wow 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 people coming from Brazil from India from Canada, Nick from Odessa, welcome, great, Scotland, Germany, Annapolis, USA, Paris, Italy, oh, Anton, hey, how's it going, my friend, uh, from Estonia, uh, Tallinn, Turkey, another one from Italy, Milan, Oh, I wish I would go to Milan. I was supposed to go into Milan this year, but you know, the, the COVID happened. So maybe next year, maybe next year, folks. Uh, Massimo, looking forward to visit Milan one day. London, uh, Mexico City, Dallas, Texas, Vietnam. Oh, Sajid, welcome from New Jersey. Not far from me, not very far. Where from New Jersey? Where exactly from New Jersey? Uh, oh, that's great, that's great. Uh, Germany, uh, 
Oh, now I'm uh, look like a Robert Downey Jr. Um, usually people tell me that I look more like um, Christian Slater, maybe in his younger days, maybe. Um, but I'm more looking for Brian Reynolds type of look. Um, I don't know. Baltimore, welcome. Florida. Wow, great, 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 great. It's, it's so so nice to see you here. So nice. <laughs> from there's some center from from North Pole. It's great. It's great to have here. Um, all right, Randolph, New Jersey. That's great. That's my uh, my people. My people in New Jersey here. That's awesome. Guys, you are amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Now today, today we're going to be doing some something um, something interesting. Like I try to make this interesting. So um, so that's why. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm really excited about this. Now, so since it's uh, um, it's going to be like a hands-on workshop, uh, there's a couple things that you folks need to know. So let's start with this um, thing a little quick. So, um, so since it's a hands-on workshop, let me know in the comments if you want to follow along. If you want to follow along, meaning that uh, if something didn't work on your computer, um, you can also like uh, type uh, this question in your um, in uh, in the chat. If you don't want to follow along, you're also welcome to stick around uh, and ask some questions that also would be related to Kafka and stream processing and maybe some things related to today's to topics. So we're going to be talking about some Kubernetes. We're going to be deploying our application to Kubernetes. We're going to be seeing like different options how you can deploy it, and we're going to be using Confluent Cloud as our Kafka uh, service. So for that, I prepared a couple of things for you. So first of all, this link is. Um, it's a link to our kind of sort of materials. Um, th that's something that you might want to use um, if you want to decide to follow along. So that's going to be our place uh, where we're going to be have some useful links, for example. Once again, uh, you can go there. So there's a short link. It's a gamov.dev slash xmas workshop. So this is where you can find a um, like a walkthrough. Um, if you want, um, the, the, the whole source code of this, um, of this workshop is already in GitHub. So if you're not interested in uh, um, doing this by yourself right now, uh, you can do this anytime like afterwards. Um, so that's, uh, that's it's here. The, um, Similar stuff like the code supposed to be here if during this if during this we will hit some of the roadblocks I will be able to fix this immediately. So um, The um, let me know like write down in the comments right now like right now um, if you want to follow along or you are um, Not uh, not interested in this type of jazz Yes, some people also mentioned that I might look like Keanu Reeves back in uh, like a um, um, the like a Speed Times or maybe a, 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 what what is the movie called? Because in Russian there was a different name of this movie than it was um, in. Uh, in English, maybe Patrick Swayze also. Uh, sometimes people mention this as well. Um, so, folks, keep your favorite movies coming because we're going to be doing uh, some of the movie processing here. Is this geolocation being streamed via, via Kafka? It's actually a very good idea. I do have. Uh, I need to have some like a free time so I can implement this and write this app. Maybe integrate with some of the point break. Exactly. There was a point break. We will. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about this. Um, I. Um, I will be. Uh, I will be. Uh, actually, I really like this idea. I really want to show you this idea, and this is um, um, this is where I want to get these uh, comments from YouTube and process this real time. That would be great. Yes, exactly. That was a point break that I was talking about. This is how I remember Patrick Swayze there. So Keanu Reeves was there. Uh, Patrick Swayze was there. But Patrick Swayze, you know, what's the movie I'm 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 I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be talking about. It's a uh, uh, Roadhouse. Of course, Roadhouse. <laughs> when we're talking about Patrick Swayze, we're talking about Roadhouse, right? Um, uh, the Matrix. I, I still remember when I first time watched this. It was on a VHS times, and I watched uh, the Matrix. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was like a very good copy, but it has this like uh, green tint, and I didn't know that time that was kind of 
choice of the color scheme for directors. I thought like maybe I get scammed and I got some of the uh, bad version of this metric. So <laughs> metric is also good. All right. So if you're going to be oh, John Wick, <laughs> that's a great movie. Uh, it's a great movie. Um, <laughs> All right, so Janus wanted to say it's a Freddy Prince Jr., not a Robert Downey Jr. Um, yeah, maybe. Uh, how? Where's this guy now? Like, I don't know what he's doing these days. Um, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo. I guess <laughs> I still remember him from uh, Scooby Doo. Um, All right, so the uh, people. Thank you so much if you decide to follow. So, a couple things here. If you decide to follow, I collected some of the feedback from the last time, and I tried to make it kind of like a balanced uh, between um, uh, some of the local and cloud stuff. So I will try to use cloud uh, for my both things, my, for my Confluent Cloud, obviously, naturally, that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, for that, if I'm going to be using a Confluent Cloud, and you will want to use, you make sure to use this code uh, called Movies200, uh, and I will show you how we can activate this code. So first of all, um, we need to go into login. If you not uh, don't have a Confluent Cloud account yet, um, you need to create the Confluent Account. So you just go and sign up this for free. Um, in this case, um, you will just go there and sign up. I will use my own um, account, existing account, and uh, I will try to use these live streams. And it will not load for some reasons. Okay, live streams, glowing in, and uh, I'm going into a Confluent Cloud account. Um, and uh, the way how you want to activate uh, this code, you go in the billing and payment, and there should be something like a, a promo code. So in this section, billing and payment, this is where you enter this promo code. I'm not going to use this promo code because I don't want to steal 200 bucks from, from you folks, but this is where, oops, uh, it's movies uh, 200. So movies 200, this is where you enter this promo code. Um, you still, in order to run this stuff, uh, as the last time, you still need to have a, a, a credit card on file, but this credit card will not be charged if you will do exactly as I said. You enter promo code and uh, those uh, promo dollars, you will have enough for a couple weeks of running this cloud. Um, if something will happen, maybe you forgot to sh shut something off or you forgot to uh, turn this cluster and you got charged, email me, um, email me or DM me in Twitter. We will figure out this for you. So uh, I'm here not to steal your, your bucks. I'm here to teach you some cool, cool tricks, cool things. All right, so once again, if you go to uh, your account, you already logged in, um, you go in here into billings and payments, uh, go into payment details and put your promo code. Um, and this movies 200 promo code that you will be using today. Now, when we've done this, get, uh, we get this out of the way. Um, and uh, that's what we uh, will be doing. Next thing is that you want to open this. So this is where I put some of the interesting links for this workshop. So before we start, there is a section that allows you to um, how you can start this. So you can clone all this repository with all the demos that we have. Like uh, it's a called demo scene repository. We'll post all our demos or our developer advocates posting these demos there. Now you can clone this or you can go and just clone one folder that would be uh, only um, would be only related to um, to this live stream. So, for example, um, I already have this uh, in uh, in my in my in my possession. So let's see if I do have if I'm doing this right. Let me check if I'm doing this right. Um, also, let me know if my font is big enough so you will be able to see it on your screen. Um, if you will be able to see this on your screen. So what I did here, I did exactly as I said. You either can clone this repository or can go to this uh, GitHub uh, link and just simply, um, you just simply click downloads. There is a uh, button called download and you will get this. So we're going to be operating in this streaming movies workshop folder. And I will use this into 
to start my uh, IntelliJ just as, as editor. Uh, let me show you around what do we have here. So a couple things. Whilst it's starting, whilst it's starting, um, it will have all nice things here. So first of all, uh, it has a readme. Uh, in the given point of time, you can also go here and figure out where you are at this point. And very important section about prerequisites. So there's a lot of things going on and there's a lot of uh, um, uh, the bits and bytes uh, you want to put there. So the first thing first, we're going to be using, um, it's, a, it's a Java application. Kafka Streams is a Java um, a framework, so we need to have Java installed. And uh, the, the easiest way how you can check if you have a Java installed, uh, for me, for example, it's easy. I do have this uh, nice terminal that shows me uh, which version of Java you, I'm using, but essentially you can do a uh, Java version. And uh, this is what you get. I'm using Java 11. You can use whatever version you want. Um, I did experience some of the issues with Java 14. It just, I guess, before, because I am um, not the master at all this like a module story and how it's done in Gradle. So, So this one, all right. So let me do um, slightly bigger fonts. Java, next thing in our prerequisites, what we need to have <clears throat> is a Confluent Cloud CLI. So if I would do, um, so Confluent Cloud CLI, I'm using the latest and greatest version um, and uh, using this version. Uh, next thing that we're going to be using is uh, kube control, since we need to talk to Kubernetes. We're going to be using, um, so now this is, this is where you can, you can do it yourself, you know, and you can figure out yourself. So I do have uh, two options, how you can run local Kubernetes cluster, um, K3D and uh, Minikube. I didn't put this here, but Minikube is also, um, let me put this. Um, inside here, so I would not forget to include those. Uh, let's see if it's a, yeah, it's there. Now, um, K3D is um, it's a pretty cool tool, actually. So it is a, um, a Kubernetes cluster inside a Docker. It's a K3S project, and um, K3D is a Dockerized version of this um, uh, minimal Kubernetes distribution. Um, it's also very good uh, if you want to use this in, uh, in your computer. What about Docker? Yes, of course, you need to use Docker here. Um, a Docker for desktop, we're going to be using do Docker here uh, because I will be um, building some images locally. So um, I will be using Docker here. Still, still we need to use Docker. <coughs> So quite very important question from Robert. So we're already running some stuff in production on Confluent Cloud and we're being charged. Any impact if I add the promo code? So um, you can use this promo code per environment. You can create this separate environment for your, um, um, for your whatever workload that you're using. I recommend you maybe not to mix and match this stuff that you're already using in, in, uh, in the Confluent Cloud. Uh, and, uh, but you will get a breakdown on the different environments. Like if you create a test environment and got charged for this, uh, we can definitely work this out with you. So that's a very good question. Um, try, to not <laughs> try to not do these live streams on uh, production workloads. That would be awkward. <laughs> So, um, yes, uh, we're going to be using Docker uh, here. Um, that we'll be using here as well. Um, so, kind is, kind is a Kubernetes in Docker. I never, um, I never try this kind and I never uh, play around with this. So, I found multiple ways how they work. Um, this workshop 100% work on Minikube, surprisingly. Surprisingly, uh, I'm saying this, but uh, it works on Minikube. Previously, I have like a huge pain when I'm using Minikube. Um, Docker for desktop. 
um, if, if, we, if we have any ex experts uh, about, uh, from uh, Docker for desktops, um, I do have uh, some problems with this, and I will show you in a second. So, for example, I try to use this uh, Kubernetes distribution for from the Docker, and it just hangs in this uh, like a starting, uh, in the starting, starting, starting. So I try to reset this, I try to re reinstall this, it's still stuck. So I give up on Kubernetes on uh, Docker, and uh, just yeah, just we'll be using just Docker as it is. This now Minikube. Uh, Minikube is actually working, and uh, my example code that I tried actually works. With K3S, uh, we're uh, talking about K3S, uh, where is my uh, K3D or K3S, I do experience some of the problems if I'm using scaffold with this. You can do some manual deployment, like if you do like a kube control minus f apply and this kind of stuff, it works. Um, but um, I couldn't find a way how I can um, uh, make this scaffold work with this. And the scaffold, scaffold is the tool that I already showed in this live stream a few times. Uh, people actually like it, um, and uh, hopefully uh, I will show you some of the cool things. So the scaffold in this case is just like a fancy uh, tool that automates some of the things that I don't need to do manually. So, all right, that's um, that's 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 good. So um, and uh, if we're going back here. Um, all right, great. Uh, Leslie, if you can help me with this one, that would be great. You can submit either PR or like DM me in Twitter. We can figure out, uh, we can figure out. Speaking about which, uh, speaking about which, uh, you can always uh, find me in, um, in Twitter. Um, Twitter, Twitter should appear somewhere on the screen right now. Um, and uh, that would be great if you uh, DM me there. And uh, where is it? Uh, too much, too many, too many information. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my Twitter. Uh, if you can go and follow me, that would be great. You can always find uh, me there. And um, thank you very much. All right. Um, can we use other driver as well if we don't wish to use Docker? Um, so again, this is not nothing to do with this. Uh, the Kubernetes uh, uh, giving up Docker support. So here I'm building. Uh, I'm using Docker uh, just to build a build image. Um, I didn't explore. Um, other tools, for example, I can use uh, um, uh, some other tools build these uh, Docker images. But image that I build is OCR compliant, and uh, this image uh, also will run on Kubernetes. So I personally will be running my Kubernetes cluster in GCP, but you can run this in Minikube as well. So in order to check that you have all requir uh, required dependencies, so I do have this small Mac file, and it has uh, installed depths. Um, so what it does, um, if you are on Mac and if you're using Brew, um, it will install all these dependencies. It will go and check um, if it's, um, all these dependencies are there. If you don't have a Confluence CLI, this tool also, uh, this uh, script also will download and install latest and greatest version of Confluence CLI. And it takes some time to uh, to download some things. I just wanna, <clears throat> I just wanna just do. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, I think the um, Yanis already running um, uh, in front of us, and he already have all the <laughs> things installed. That's great. Um, that's um, some script that also checks your environment and you have all required things uh, installed. Um, can't we code with Scala or Python? Um, dear friend, Cheetan, you can do whatever you want, uh, my friend. And uh, the good thing is that uh, Kafka clients available for both um, Scala and Python. Though the things that I will be showing you today um, uh, is strictly like JVM, specifically Kafka Streams bits. Kafka Streams is JVM library, so you can still use uh, Scala or you can try to use Jiton. It probably would be a little bit awkward if you want to use Kafka Streams. But Kafka Streams has Scala API and um, 
and I already feel that I'm uh, talking about Scala too much. Usually uh, people know that I'm not the <laughs> right Scala person, but you can, you definitely can. And uh, one of the recent things, um, if you go to our um, in Confluent blog post, we recently posted the um, like a one Kafka 101, 102 uh, for Scala developers, uh, written by very um, um, the, the savvy uh, Scala developer um, that uh, knows all these uh, magic things around Scala. So I highly recommend you check out our blog post um, around Scala. Uh, my, um, my little helper who helps me with uh, all these links and uh, organizing the stuff, Victoria, will definitely will post this link very soon in, in, this, in this comment. All right, so meanwhile, meanwhile, we got all these dependencies installed. Um, and all these dependencies will include Kubernetes CLI, K3D, JQ, Scaffold, K9S. K9S is important. K9S is important, and I think uh, you folks appreciate this when I will show you this to you. Um, and uh, Minikube. So, um, and the next, there, there would be a few options for you. So first option is that you can start, if you can do make, uh, create, and there would be few options for you available. You can create GKE cluster, local K3D cluster, and local Minikube cluster. So I will create local uh, Minikube cluster, and uh, just to show how we can do local and how we can do, um, uh, you know, glo global, uh, how we can do in cloud. Because the next thing that I will provision my Kubernetes cluster in uh, Google Cloud Platform. So I will create this create local Minikube cluster. And uh, since Minikube was installed, um, it and I already tried to run uh, uh, Minikube uh, before, I will, um, there would be some of the output that I will also comment out. So, um, all right, folks, um, just uh, let's see if I missed any comments uh, while it is uh, installing and restarting and all these kind of things. Okay, so this is a very good question. Uh, the, there was a question about a, how long this uh, promo code will work. It, it's going to be until December 31st, uh, 2021. Um, it's valid, but after that, you still have uh, 30 days to consume all these uh, things. So you can activate this anytime before the, this new year. Um, and uh, after that, you have uh, 30 days to, to consume it between you and me. If you're watching this, DM me if you need to have uh, some extra promo code. I can make something, maybe, so, but shh, between you and me. All right, so we're getting back and our uh, mini cube cluster is already up. So if I will just do, <coughs> and it's mini cube, I'll just do cluster info. Uh, in cluster info, it says like a local host and things like that. So uh, mini cube is up and running. The next thing that I personally want to do is also to have my um, uh, GCP cluster. So create um, GKE, GKE cluster. So it will create GKE cluster in uh, my current um, in my current profile. Um, if you're using GKE, you can use the same um, um, the same approach. But in this case, you need to have a. Uh, GKE tools installed as well. For example, cloud uh, SDK tools in order to create those clusters. I will just uh, go and create this cluster for me. Um, it also checks if I have a enough, um, if I have a correct uh, dependencies installed and things like that. So that's um, that uh, that will do, and the cluster will be deployed. <coughs> Okay, so let me see. Uh, let me see some questions. Um, since CFCon started with container D, so as so yeah, the container D is, is a runtime, and uh, this runtime also supports um, running the images that Docker pro produces. But the Docker produces OCI uh, Opera Container um, specification. Um, uh, the format. So essentially what they do, they're removing a Docker runtime that was essentially a shim on top of container D. So they basically provided some of the, you know, the thing that will appear as a Docker for some of the uh, Docker commands. But um, 
it's 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 nothing nothing really uh, destructive. So the, your images still will be working there. And I think this is important only for people who actually manage and deploy their own Kubernetes clusters. It makes uh, their life easier, so they don't need to support uh, all the different runtimes. So that's my understanding. So yeah, and uh, now we go in into world of a uh, deploying uh, Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, let me show you uh, quickly. If you want to see what is going on there, I am, um, I'm not a huge fan of uh, make files, but I do have a <laughs> good friends uh, that work with me in, uh, in my developer experience team. Um, who use uh, Makefile, and I learn from them how I can um, uh, how, how can I do some stuff with Makefile. So it's always it's good to uh, it's good to know some of the interesting uh, things that you want to do here. So first of all, um, there is a um, you can create and destroy local clusters, uh, create and destroy Kubernetes cluster, and we will be creating a Confluent Cloud cluster in a second, and I will show you how you can do that um, using this um, this tool as well. So before we doing this, uh, once again, if people asking about um, about Doc. Um, there is a um, document where uh, there's a short link in the very beginning. You can find some of the text from a Confluent account, and there should, should be see something like a, a Christmas workshop. You can just uh, scroll up in the chat. You will see the uh, Confluent account, and uh, um, that will be there. <clears throat> okay, you can find this. But essentially, this is where you want to be. Um, this is where you want to be. Um, into this one. Oops, this this is our guy. All right, so and I'll just do uh, CTX, um, just to make sure that I'm on the right context. So right now the context was switched to my uh, Confluent uh, or my uh, GCP cluster. So now I can do uh, K cluster info, and I'll get my GCP um, URL or whatnot in a second. Yeah, it's connected somewhere here, and just do get nodes, um, and all my nodes. So just uh, two nodes, Kubernetes cluster, relatively small, but important thing. Important thing that I use. Um, I use uh, high mem uh, machines. So a standard for some reason don't work well. So I had to uh, switch to um, this. Now, next thing is that create. Um, C Cloud cluster. So this command. Oh, let me uh, let me remove this real quick. I'm forgetting to remove this. <clears throat> Create the cluster, and I'm going down. So what it will do? Um, so what it will do? It will use C Cloud CLI, um, C Cloud CLI to uh, connect to my account, and it will say, okay, so it's going to be using resources. Yes, I know. Yes. Uh, also, I would like to create key SQL DB um, in my Confluent Cloud. So in this case, it will create a, a cloud in my account. Um, uh, some of you, uh, if you were following this channel for a while, you've seen some of the work that I'm doing. Um, you know that there is a um, C Cloud CLI. There is a um, the uh, kind of like a the set of scripts that can automate some of the steps for you. So in this particular case, I'm using this uh, C Cloud library that, uh, again, uh, folks from my uh, from my team uh, and uh, integration architecture team, they develop um, develop this set of tools. <clears throat> OK, so this is a very good question. This is a very good question. Is there any documentation to follow these instructions on Windows? Um, unfortunately, I don't have it. And simply because I don't have uh, Windows installed and uh, I don't have anywhere uh, where I can run this. Um, I, uh, some of the tools, they more or less are cross-platform. For example, CCloud and Coop Control. Those tools are cross-platform. So you should not, be, uh, should not be any problems for you to use this um, if you are running this in Windows. Um, 
if you are, some of the difficulties might be if you're dealing with some Kubernetes because I simply don't know how the Kubernetes will work. Uh, Gradle works fine on, on Windows. You should be uh, fine with this. Should be no problem to build this application and run this. So um, that's, uh, that's good. Um, and um, some people, yeah, some people mentioned this. For example, Naveen is mentioning this, that people saying WSL2 uh, on Windows uh, 10 uh, will help you to run some of the, you know, Docker workloads and, and things like that. Um, so story is not great. However, um, one hour... Um, uh, Jim. Jim, he is our technical writer in the KSQL DB team, and he recently published a blog post where he's talking about how to run Kafka using WSL in, um, in um, WSL on Windows. So check out our uh, blogs, um, our blogs channel, and if you do uh, Confluent, uh, you can find this uh, blog there. So essentially, if if you're interested in this type of jazz. Uh, for example, if we go into, <clears throat> um, but since Microsoft is doing an incredible uh, work with supporting Kubernetes community, I think um, the the tooling wise they have uh, support. But again, uh, read read this blog post. This will give you idea how we can run at least like some basic Kafka workloads in. Um, in uh, on Windows and uh, let us know what you think. So, uh, Victoria, if you're listening, can you send this link uh, to um, to the chat? Thank you. All right. So now, um, if I go to my Confluent Cloud now, if I'm going to my Confluent Cloud and I will refresh my screen, I will see this like a uh, weird looking environment called Demo in V blah 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 blah. So this is the where uh, I'm going to be uh, using this cloud. Uh, this is this cluster, um, and this cluster was created. Now I'm waiting until my KSQL DB application will be up and running. So we're going to be waiting for this uh, for uh, for some time now. <clears throat> now, oh, I didn't I didn't show you. Sorry, <laughs> that happens. Like that that happens when you are a producer and performer. Um, you, you, you producer and you talent <laughs> and you do multiple things all by yourself. So now, as I can, as you can see here, if I run the script again, make create CC cloud, uh, cloud cluster, it just created new cluster with this ID in my environment uh, I, I, like this. So in this case, uh, also it extracted the Kafka key that I would um, I would use for my application. So. Um, let me show you. This is where I'm going into my Confluent Cloud. I'm going to my uh, demo environment, and there we see this Kafka cluster. So Ka Kafka cluster is up and running right now. So I can see some of the um, some of the metrics, not data, obviously. So I'm not using this data. Uh, some people saying that uh, they have a wrong promo code. Okay, so this may be uh, uh, 200. And the folks, on my screen, there was 200. Uh, so I don't know where you get this uh, 2,000. I would gladly, <laughs> I would give you 2,000 uh, bucks if I have, but like, hey, there's the movies 200, movies 200. If you have an uh, error with this code, uh, for example, um, Uh, code, code is valid. Uh, you might have error code if you uh, created this account, but you didn't put your credit card there yet. So if you put the credit card, you should uh, try to rerun this and you should be able to um, credit card plus uh, plus code. Yeah. But also, if you um, if you just join, if you uh, join the, this uh, cloud uh, thingy, I guess by default you will get a 300 bucks on the credit. So in this case, you have like 500 bucks uh, in, in total. Um, <clears throat> So uh, Nick is asking, yeah, Nick, so the last time we, we, we learned that um, you need to go into your uh, UI uh, and put the credit card first. So we're working right now to resolve this issue or like providing some of the like a free tier or trial tier that will not allow you to uh, enter credit card. But this is something is that is not there yet. So in this case, uh, you put the credit card. Uh, once again, you're going into 
if you go, if you want to have here, you go in here, um, you go in into uh, billing and payment, um, you put, uh, even me, it's my credit card, my personal card, um, it's even here, and um, uh, put the promo code here. Um, <clears throat> Uh, movies, right? Movies. Try to enter this all caps. I think uh, the um, I think the code uh, would be um, is uh, the, the you know the case sensitive. Not gonna click this because I don't want steal another two hundred bucks. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's see. What's the best way to fetch data from a different service? Let's assume service A needs data from service B on the fly. There's a couple of things how we can do this. Um, one of the things is uh, if you're using APIs, they, one service can call another service. But I, I, would, I, would, I would focus on more like a synchronous communication and uh, using, for example, uh, Kafka to integrate those uh, services. And maybe one service can um, send the data into Kafka, another service will read this data into Kafka. So, um, all right, code should be uppercase. Nick, thank you so much for um, testing this out for me, and I appreciate your help. That's awesome. You are all my little helpers today. So once we're done with this, so once it, I promise you, this is the hardest part, as you know. Uh, the hardest part is just to, to start because once infrastructure up and running, um, I already try to um, take care of you. Um, um, you might see you might see some of uh, some of the errors uh, like this in the console. Um, Ignore those because I might mess up with some of the um, CLI magic. So this uh, CLI magic might uh, might not work for me. Now, uh, if you able to get to the point where your um, local environment will have this folder called stacks config. And you will have this file called a folder called Delta Configs, meaning that you gold, meaning that you are on the right track and the cluster is created. So let me uh, let me actually take a look. Let's let's see what's what I do have a, um, some topics. I see this topic was created by KSQL DB, meaning that my, my KSQL DB was successfully connected and it's up and running. So I do have this cluster up and running here in uh, in the same zone as my uh, Google Cloud. <clears throat> now, let's see if we do have uh, any questions here. Uh -huh. uh, do we have to use Kubernetes state full set if we're deploying KStreams application performing stateful operation like join? Um, it is um, recommended. And we can talk about this in uh, just a second. We will uh, talk about Kafka streams uh, uh, bits of this, uh, of this setup. Um, but I guess uh, this is the short answer is it's highly recommended. Um, should you use it? Uh, it's up to you. I prefer use stateful sets just simply because it's it helped me um, more have a little bit more control. I will talk about this. I will talk about this in a, in a few. <sighs> All right. Question is a bit of topic. Please answer for your convenience. Okay, so since I was already here and it appeared, so I will answer. Uh, is there any documentation describes architecture and performance when using join uh, across Kafka streams? So that's a very good question. That's a very good question because I we will be doing joining some uh, in, in, this, in this application. Um, and uh, the way how the joins are actually happened, the, the way how they work and they, how they implement it in, uh, in the Kafka streams, um, they actually rather smart and they much simpler than you think they are. So that's why I don't think you should worry much about like performance because it doesn't do join on the global scale of multiple topics. I will show you how this works um, in, uh, in a few seconds. 
how much uh, data is cached at time, the, what happens if one topic streams the loss compacted and uh, uh, use the full data in the compacted topic for a join. Uh, it's very, I, I feel there's some background in this question uh, because there is a very precise, uh, precise question. We can talk about this. We can talk about this. Uh, do not forget uh, this question. I, I really want to talk about this. Um, interested in uh, Confluent in, in Kubernetes, Tested uh, CP Helm charts, great, great. Uh, that's a um, that's great tool to use. Um, but uh, doesn't Confluent operator walk or, or Minikube uh, to test it out features? So a uh, short answer, yes, it does, but it requires some tweaking. Uh, we are supposed to have some docs around this. Um, and um, uh, yes, we do have some success to running this in, in Minikube. Um, there is some of the... Uh, things that you need to tweak in, in uh, operator uh, Helm charts uh, in order to run like one instance of Kafka, one instance of uh, Zookeeper, and so far and so on. So, um, so yes, a short answer is yes. Uh, if you couldn't find this documentation, ping me in Twitter. I will uh, be able to uh, help you with this one. Will this recording be available after uh, for us to refer later? Of course, of course. This whole I do is just recording videos for you folks, so you can return to this later. But I really appreciate for those of you who stay in and asking this question, because it gets a little bit lonely here when I'm kind of like sitting here and talking to camera, but at least I see some of the YouTube comments and meaning that I'm not alone and some people here watching. Um, so yeah, that would be great. Uh, is Confluent Cloud only available GCP? No. Uh, Confluent Cloud available in all major providers. If I, for example, if I say uh, the default environment, I will go ahead and create a cluster. If I create a cluster, say uh, the basic configuration, it, it allows me to create a cluster. Oh, sorry. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I am uh, switching to my screen in a second. Now, in this case, I am a, uh, going in to create cluster. I can create cluster in AWS. I can create cluster in Google Cloud, and I can create cluster in Azure. And moreover, uh, the cool thing that I never showed you this before, but I think I should, if you already have account in Amazon or you have a corporate account or you have an account in Google Cloud or Azure, you actually can go and, and, and request the Confluent Cloud via Marketplace. So in this case, you don't need to put a credit card. So your boss will be responsible for paying this. So, <laughs> so that's... that's um, that sensor. So yeah, that's um, uh, Confluent Cloud is available on major three providers and uh, the, the different regions available. So um, different zones and things like that. So all all these all these cool things are available there. All right. <clears throat> All right, question. If port terminates, does Spring Boot Kafka Streams application shut down gracefully, or do we add out shutdown hook for Spring Boot Spring application? Uh, short answer is uh, Spring will handle this, and uh, uh, Spring listens to write signals from the pod, and uh, it will terminate all these underlying beans because Spring will manage Kafka Streams application for, in my case. Has Confluent, Confluent design patterns available as document for Kafka? Marcel, I don't understand this question entirely. Are you talking about like a reference architecture or something like that? Um, if, if you're talking about reference architecture or the white papers, uh, we do have plenty of those. Uh, we do have architecture for cloud, we have architecture for on-prem. So um, that's, um, that's um, we do have. And uh, if uh, Victoria is still listening, um, or at least like I will put some links down below, so don't worry. Oh, Tony, we're lonely. Yes, we are. But like we're together in our loneliness, right? Uh, is it possible to use my own AWS account for Confluent Cloud? So you can use uh, AWS account uh, and you can provision Confluent Cloud. You cannot uh, kind of uh, run Confluent Cloud on your AWS hardware yet, but you can do a peering with uh, VPC peering uh, between uh, our clouds. It's also available. How we can get motivated every day to learn concept? Uh, ah, it's it's question not to me, it's a question to uh, to Raj. Uh, and who is Raj? Raj will reply. All right, Dushar. 
talk too soon. Now, um, switching, uh, switching back to, uh, to the screen. Now, so once we do have this, uh, we do have all our required um, um, <clears throat> all things that we need is already here. So in order, we can proceed two different ways. So let's start with this um, uh, overview of our application. First project called core model. So core model is actually a project that includes um, this weird looking uh, files or like a JSON looking files that we called Avro schema. So in some of the uh, live streams uh, you folks might see, I was talking about uh, Avro, Protobuf, and um, JSON. So all these formats are suitable for um, having like a scheme of some sort that allows me to uh, externalize the, uh, the metadata, definition of the data, and some of the binaries uh, payload. So Kafka will store binary and we will store our data inside the schema registry. So in this case, my cluster uh, my cluster also provisioned with the scheme registry. Right now, there's no schemas. Uh, I will start my application and we'll start seeing some schemas. Um, so in, um, in, this, in this case, we're going to be using a few things. So first thing is the movie. Movie will include movie ID, title, release year, genre, actors, directors, and all, uh, all cool things so, uh, uh, that describe movie. Um, second thing is that we're going to be using rating, which is will include movie ID and rating. So if you go somewhere, click say like Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb, you will have a rating there. Um, then, um, then we will use some of the intermediate. For example, we need to have a result stored somewhere. They will have an object called rated movies that will include movie information and some information about a rating. And uh, this is something interesting that I will be talking about a little bit in the uh, in future. And um, in this case, I do have uh, some utilities that allow me to parse things. And I'll explain how this parser work in just a second. So in order to see how this, um, how this compilation work, in my Gradle, I find this core model project. Actually, let me do this bigger. I would go with the... Um, <clears throat> with presentation mode so you folks can see it. So in these tasks, I can go and run a source generation and there would be generate Avro Java. In this case, it will run the uh, Avro compiler that would read the schema and produce some of the Java looking objects for me or Java looking classes. So as you can see here, there would be Confluent Developer Movie and Confluent Developer Rating. So let's take a look where this is coming from. So inside this build directory, there would be some uh, generated main Avro stuff that I will have here. Um, and the uh, movie will include some interesting things. Um, it's actually a pretty big file, um, but this file, this pretty much only thing that you need, uh, you, the serializer will read some of the information how this uh, object will be serialized and, and things like that. So um, this is something that we package and this will available for my project to use. Um, there would be another um, interesting, uh, interesting fella here. So that's a method called get specific hour survey that will be producing specific hour survey based on the type of my um, of my object, and we will be using this one. So next thing uh, is that uh, we're going to be looking into movie generator. This is our first step. This is our first big step, um, and uh, we're going to be uh, talking about this. <clears throat> So there's a producer class, and inside the producer class, we're doing a couple things. So um, if you've been here for, for a while, you know that I'm a fan of this uh, like a Kafka, Spring Kafka integration, and um, Kafka template is our producer. So in this case, our producer, will, uh, we will be using this to populate movies and uh, getting some of the random ratings. If with ratings it's quite clear what we're doing here, it's just you know generate something, um, uh, some from random movies uh, and generate some random based on certain rating. What about movies? Where are those movies coming from? And to uh, to serve that, you can find there's movies that uh, movies that is a text file that looks like a text file that many of you folks seen in many enterprise settings. 
like um, um, write down in the comment if you're working on the financial institution, if you were able to kind of dealing with the data transfer by uh, uploading some data from FTP uh, and it's going to be pipe delimited text or like uh, in my case, I have a double colon selenitic, uh, 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 delimited text. So each line will represent each movie. And uh, in this case, I'm using this parser in, in, my, um, in my class, my parser. Um, and there's parse movies that which is simply drops that uh, like breaks down this line and after that generates my object uh, of movie that will include all the things that um, we're going to be using today. Now that's that's with movies. So let's see if we will be able to produce those. Um, and uh, the way how we can do this, uh, we can uh, we can do local. If we can do local, uh, in this case, this is what you need to have. You need to have a application dot properties but something is missing here right something is missing because it says active profile is uh, C cloud so in order to get those you can go here and say file <coughs> application uh, dot uh, C cloud dot properties um, now we'll just pass this and where you can get this if you go to um, if you go to Confluent Cloud, you can find this clusters, my cluster, um, <clears throat> tools and configs, and clients, you can find there's a Spring Boot section. In this Spring Boot section that you can go and copy. Um, and uh, you will be using this session here like this. Now, th there's some of the... Um, the placeholders, where you can replace these placeholders from. So remember uh, my script, if I would run this make file, it will create some of the local um, uh, stack config file. This is where you can get your key. This is your key. And uh, this is your uh, scheme registry key, scheme registry um, password, and this scheme registry connection. So, um, but we do have a, like a very well formatted um, version here. Uh, we can also extract this one if you like to deal with the environment variables and, and things like that. So, that's uh, that's what that's where you can get. Or there's a supposed to be Java or something like that. Um, no, 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 no. Anyway, so I will go ahead. So and uh, copy this guy. It's my key, my password. Now my another key and my another password. So I'm getting back to my applications here and I'm going here and inserting this over here. So uh, let's start from the, uh, from the end. So since we're doing this, uh -huh. uh, it's going to be password. And to make sure that um, you remove all this Uh huh. And now we go in with a cluster secret. And the cluster secret should look like this. <clears throat> and now we go in with um, cluster key. So that's um, that's your configuration. So essentially, uh, if I run this locally, this should uh, work and start producing stuff in my um, Confluent uh, Confluent Cloud. So, but should we should we uh, should we go here or should we switch to um, to actual uh, actual Kubernetes? So let's talk about Kubernetes. So we'll try to deploy our first bit. So our first bit. Um, before I jump to this one, let me see uh, if you see if you see there's any common. Um, so make install depths doesn't work for uh, in Linux. Yes, it doesn't work in Linux because it uses Brew, which is Mac OS uh, uh, version. There is a Linux version of Brew, uh, but um, I didn't support this one. So uh, you can find the ways how you can uh, install those dependencies just manually. Uh, essentially, the, the way how you can do this, you can find... Um, there's a brew file. You, you need to install all these uh, things manually, essentially, uh, for Linux. Um, yep, sorry about that. All right, uh, we're talking about patterns of common problems, like retries, error handling, uh, handle messaging, uh, pushing data topics, and so on, so on. Yes, uh, we do have this, uh, this type of materials in our w w white papers, all these um, 
cloud the related enterprise patterns is also there uh, developed by um, um, there's some paper by Gwen Shapira, the, uh, there's some paper by um, Eva Bicek. Um You just uh, need to look for, for this one. You should be finding this. <clears throat> so how we can migrate QSQL script from old to new versions? Um, it's like very generic question. Uh, is there any like a specific uh, thing? I think the team is, is already implementing some of the basics um, uh, script migration things that are already available. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's something that you can already do. I think it's uh, one of the recent KSQL DB already support that. Um, Missed create the Java class with Avro. How we can do this? All right. So how we can do this? Uh, you can do this in a command line. Actually, you can do if you here. You can do Gradle, um, Gradle W. You have this um, uh, movies generator, and there should be generate. Um, something like generate uh, Avro Java or Java Avro. Um, <laughs> let's see how it's called in, um, let's see how it's called in, uh, uh, in my ID. <clears throat> Inside the Gradle, generate Avro Java. So you can do something like this. Um, Gradle W um, movies generator, generate, um, again. It's annoying. Avro Java, generate Avro Java. Um, this, that's command, that's, yeah. Generate our Java, it's supposed to be. Okay. Let's see if I can do tasks. <clears throat> uh, ah, I'm sorry. Yes, it's not movie generator, it's a core model. If I do core model, um, and in this case, um, core, core, core vector, it's core model. Uh, and generate our Java, yep. So generate our Java, this is what we have. That will produce this, and after that you can do build, and in this case uh, you will get this. Uh, I believe I do share my screen right now. Um, Let me know if I'm not sharing my screen. All right. So, a couple things. Let's get back to it. Now, we're going into world of scaffold. Now, <clears throat> let's do this. Movies generator. Um, and in the world of scaffold, scaffold.yaml. Um, let's skip this part for now, shall we? Um, we will skip that. All right, um, and uh, rating processor will also skip that because we're not there yet. So next thing is that we're gonna be using this movie generator. Now this is important because it will work on my case because you probably need to put your own Docker, um, uh, Docker credentials. So for example, in this case, my images will be placed in my uh, Docker um, registry, which is gonna be, you know, do Docker hosted uh, registry. And, uh, um, you probably need to replace it with like your own account. Now, next thing is that I'm gonna be using uh, the custom build. So Spring Boot actually comes with a um, pretty awesome plugin called the Spring Boot um, <laughs> Gradle plugin that actually can build the image for you. And um, I can build this and after that I can push this image. Now. In order to this to work, I do have a secret thing. In my secret, uh, movies generator app secret, also need to include um, correct uh, password and, and so far and so on. So in order to do so, remember that application.properties that we created, that's what we grab. So we can copy, um, we go in here, and we will replace everything like this. Oh, snap, um, YAML. 
make sure you're doing correct uh, formatting because in this case it might be, uh, uh, yeah, so in this case it might work. So <clears throat> um, in this case I will create the secret that will include a connection to my Confluent Cloud server. My application will read this secret as application.properties and after that we'll start producing some messages in Confluent Cloud. All right. So, and this is my deployment. In this particular case, I'm using stateful set. And a reason why I'm using stateful set, because when I just use simple deployment, I don't like having this like weird looking names of the pod. With the stateful set, I will have a nice looking, uh, not very weird. Um, uh, <coughs> so, in, in this case, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. So, this is my image. And this is my uh, secret that will be uh, inserted into my, uh, in my application, uh, this application.properties. Now, let's try to run this. Uh, let's try to run this. I'll just do um, alias, uh, I'll create this alias for scaffold. And now, um, uh, CTX, let me show you that I'm on the right Kubernetes cluster. So right now, I'm trying to deploy this not local, because I will select this my mini cube as a context. Not everyone knows this, but there's a great tool. Not everyone knows this, but I want to show this, guys, uh, since you are uh, sticking around with me here. Um, is a QCTL, um, CT, uh, CTX um, plugin. That's very cool. Um, I use this uh, kubectx uh, application for a while, but it's incredibly useful because they also uh, released a kubectl plugin um, that allows me to um, use this kube control. So instead of this like a current context, blah, 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 I highly recommend this to use this. So in this case, I'm using kctx. It allows me to switch um, allows me to switch to different contexts. So now I'm in, in the Google Cloud uh, and uh, uh, Kube, it shows me um, that I am on a cluster. This is my cluster. This is my, oh, you don't see it. Uh, this is my cluster, Live Streams Workshop. And this is my version of Java. So now if I will just do scan run, what it will do, it will build my image. So in this particular case, it will build my image. Um, will generate a image, will push this image in a Docker, um, in a Docker hub, just simply because my external Kubernetes cluster needs to read this somewhere. Um, so that's why, yeah, that's why it would be important. And another thing that I do is do um, uh, kubi, kubi, kubi toggle. Uh, once again, if you miss that, this is very good, a cool plugin called kubectx. Uh, um, kubectx and uh, kubeNS that allows you to switch between contexts, meaning different clusters, and between different namespaces. Um, rewritten and go. Sweet, that's great. Um, now, so, what is happening here? So it will use a um, internally this um, this uh, uh, Spring Boot uh, image builder will use a build pack to build a very optimized and very suitable version for this Spring Boot um, app. Um, we can talk about this in some of the future episodes, but um, uh, but for now, just uh, I like to use the build pack. It's a kind of like a common thing. All right, let's see some questions. Um, how can I connect from OpenShift to Schema Registry with certificates? Um, I need a little bit more information on this. What do you mean? Like, uh, is Schema Registry is deployed inside OpenShift? Um, if uh, Schema Registry is in the cloud, uh, what you're trying to do? Um, it will be very helpful if you uh, best practice on how to manage case stream state store while deploying case streams as containerized app. Tushar, you are spot on. Um, if you want to go into, um, <clears throat> let me quickly show, and we go in here. If you go here into uh, live streams, you can find uh, last two episodes of live streams. Oops, oops, oops. Uh, or specifically, I would say, uh, episode of live streams from the last week. 
I spoke uh, a lot about scalability and a little bit about uh, storage there. So you can check this out, uh, how, how you can do this. It's, um, it's already there. But hey, folks, if you haven't seen the previous episodes, go check this out. They are also awesome. Uh, okay, so... Oh, snap. Uh-oh, I broke something. Okay, I br bring it back. Any open source microservice project available on GitHub, which is recommendable? A open source microservice project. All open source microservice <laughs> microservice projects available in GitHub. I would say there's a Spring Boot, oh, definitely. There's Micronaut. There's a KTOR in if you in a more like a Kotlin type of jazz. There is a uh, the Vertex also uh, pretty cool. So there's plenty of those. So you can uh, go and check this out. Uh, just for the sake of curiosity, Spring supports automatic generation of Docker images from your app without needing to write your own Docker file starting Spring Boot 2.3. This is exactly what I'm using here. So if you check my um, uh, build.gradle file, you will see that I'm using 2.4.1. And if I'm using this, oh, I didn't, I'm not showing this to you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <coughs> now, I'm using Spring Boot version 2.4.1, and this version is actually um, um, using this plugin. And this is what I'm using in my um, in my scaffold here. This is what I'm I'm, I'm using this. Okay, so yes, that's um, that's 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 pretty cool, and this is the recommended way. So you should not use JIP. You should not use um, because there's a um, there's a very um, interesting thing, very interesting thing that the Spring Boot image uh, plugin does with layers. And there's like specific approach how uh, build packs are handling layers in order to maybe not necessarily need make your image smaller, but at least like make the build process, process faster. For example, some of the base layer, including like Java and some of the other stuff will not change often, right? Um, and after that, some of the dependencies on your stuff will change, but not very often. Usually your code will change often. And there's uh, different, uh, different layers uh, that you can do. All right, so um, let's see if uh, my application is up and running. So now my, uh, my um, um, uh, movie generator was built and deployed. Now I can use K9S to uh, see inside my uh, Kubernetes cluster. Container creating, and now we should see some of the, uh, the magic that happens with, the, um, uh, with this. So, um, the image was deployed. Um, we'll see if, um, if application will start and it will run uh, the data generator. <coughs> Uh, write down in the comments what are you drinking today. So I'm drinking some of the um, um, the the water with some of the infused with some cool juice. Let's see if I messed up with the um, so K9s and let's see if my some of the uh, the describe why it is stuck somewhere. Maybe I messed up with some of the um, yeah. Setup failed. Uh, Spring Boot application with properties. Secret Spring Boot application properties not found. Let's see if my uh, key gay secrets. Uh, not safe. Sorry. Uh, is secret. Um, it's secrets. Uh, for some reason, my. Uh, secret uh, was not created. And the reason for that, my friends, is that I was I didn't pay attention. So because I didn't pay attention, I didn't create this. It's a template. So now in the template, I need to do <coughs> and rename this. Now it should be doing SCA run. Um, here's one downside that I found that I don't know how to override uh, for some reasons. Maybe I'm not uh, that, um, that savvy with the scaffold yet. But if I'm using custom, if I'm using custom, um, 
if I'm using custom uh, build uh, with the scaffold, for some reason it uh, still kind of like it generates this. Um, it generates this. Um, um, like it, it builds this image every time. Like I don't know why, um, well, but we will see. Um, if you know, if you are like an expert in um, in a scaffold, let me know. I would love to learn something from you. All right. So, uh, folks, you are incredible. I forgot to tell you this because it's already one hour and 15 minutes in and we still have 150 people watching. This is incredible. Thank you so much for being with me. I really appreciate you and like stick around for a few more minutes. I will show you how all these things will run, um, uh, all these uh, all things together. So now let's take a look. Uh, it says error. So let's see what kind of error we do have. Maybe I messed up with this, some of the configurations. <clears throat> all right, and Spring Boot, uh, Spring Boot, uh, uh, Spring. Okay, so this is where I didn't put correct uh, serialization formats, I guess. So it says cast alone cannot cast to string. <clears throat> I think I missed some of the um, some of the configuration properties for my application, but that's okay. I do have a uh, thing that it's already well prepared. If I'll do movie generator processor, that also needs to include <clears throat> some of the serializer configurations. Now I missed that in my uh, secret, so now. I'm going here and putting this two things. So one of the things that I need to put correct serializer for keys and values. So in order to my application uh, to produce this. So long is going to be my uh, key and my Kafka Avra third day will take care of this um, uh, serialization for um, for Confluent Cloud. So I will kill that. I uh, will just go and run this build again. So it will update my it will update my secret while I would do this. All right. Uh, yeah, some of layers are not not cached. I I, I figured this one. Um, all right. Um, oh, Steve Jobs from my previous episode. Welcome back. Uh, Eight zero eight eight. Um, if you're using RocksDB or your stateless stream application and you want to limit your resources in KWS, what things should one consider for JVM and outside of JVM? Um, how to find suitable request limits. So how to find the suitable request limits, I would say you should test um, and you need to know like if your application, um, um, you know, how this performs on the load. Usually um, like a, a monitoring uh, over time, will you will get the idea how much time you um, spending. So there's no, there's no, there's no sil silver kind of like a bullet thing that allows me to just tell you like do this. Uh, I would monitor and I would look uh, into the um, <coughs> I'm sorry <coughs> current consumption of the application and um, it's not COVID it's just like a, I'm just talking too much. <laughs> um, now the um, yeah, so I would I would suggest to monitor and see how much your application consume because uh, over the time it might change and there's like a lot of things going on. Now, we do have a producer up and running here. So our producer uh, writes this data into uh, into a movies topic and how I can test this in uh, in the cloud, my cloud. Uh, let me get back live streams login. Um, now I should be able to see this uh, two topics. So I'm going to this uh, demo scene um, and uh, there's two topics. One topic is movies. And if I'll go and see all the messages here, let's start reading from the beginning. Um, <clears throat> we do have something. You see, there's some 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 stuff. Um, and but those are not you know human readable uh, because of the binary data. So key is long and value is um, uh, ever serialized uh, ever serialized version. Uh, also, we see there's a schema populated here. Now, my schema was published into schema registry. So if I'll go here in the cloud overview, and where's it? Um, uh, where's environment? <clears throat> my environment and schemas. I should see there's two new schemas appeared. The movies value because I'm using this movies a value and the key as a long and ratings value for for ratings. Now. 
So uh, my application is producing and consuming, as we can see in Dataflow, for example. Um, and uh, my producer writes to movies, it's already done. And after that, I write to ratings, constantly writing to ratings. Uh, we can see what's the, you know, the current uh, produ production speed. Um, not super, not super fast, not super slow. It's okay. You know, it's, uh, it writes some data. Yeah, that's, that's good. All right. Uh, next thing is that let's see how we're going to be processing this. Um, folks, um, are you getting this? Um, are you are following? You're still there, you're still with me. You still does still this thing that makes uh, any sense? How many of you actually try to uh, to run this? Um, and uh, if you successful enough to run this or follow along, um, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe in the future it will work to kind of like um, I will put the at the end I will put um, code uh, the time code so you can you know return and uh, revisit how your code is different from code of what I'm doing. Um, so we do, I, let me see. Uh, All right, so um, there's a, um, there's cool, uh, there's cool discussion going on there in the, in the comments about the um, different uh, partition strategies and things like that. All right. <sighs> Ratings processor. Now, the next thing is we're going into the processing of this data. And uh, in order to explain this, what we're going to be doing this, I will be using tests. Um, and uh, I will be using my uh, topology test driver. And the topology test driver, folks, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's an it's amazing thing. I use this uh, almost every day when I write Kafka Streams application. Now, let's, let's take a look what, uh, how does my test look like. And again, this uh, topology test driver test doesn't require any configure, doesn't require any um, connection. Um, <laughs> so uh, we see some people are following, but not at the computer. That's okay. Um, you can always go and uh, revisit this afterwards. But anyway, now, um, a topology test driver. The first thing is that um, I want to show you some, some cool bits. So first of all, uh, the validation of the movie. So I want to have a materialized view of my movies because I would like to have a K-table of my movies because I want to enrich those based on the incoming stream of ratings. So in this case, I need to create this, um, where is it, uh, where is my topology? That's my topology and inside my streams app, my topology builder, create just materialized view. It's just like we did uh, in the previous live streams. It's very similar to this. Now, in order to test this, I do in this in the two ways. So first of all, I provision a new message writing down into this topic. And I want to have uh, uh, this uh, message uh, or this movie will available through a uh, state store. So if I run this, if I run this, it should um, it should execute. And now I want to show you something. Um, obviously, it has some debug output to help you to, to figure out the test, but I like to have a topology description here in order to use a um, so we are in where? We are in uh, build and deploy apps. So we talk, We already talked about generation ever schema, producer application, now rating processor. We're exploring this through topology test driver test. And let me show you if you haven't seen this. It's a small um, utility called topology test, uh, topology visualizer. So this is how my sub topology that dealing with the um, <clears throat> that dealing with um, um, materialized view of movies. So this is how it looks like. We have a movies topic. After that, uh, there's a, we're reading these movies and after that, we're producing this uh, movie state store. The difference here is that this square is actually represents a Kafka topic. And uh, this um, database looking or a cylinder looking thing is, represents a state store. So in this case, it will use um, a movie state store. It's outside of our topology. It's outside of our application. 
but the result would be written into the stage source. So we're not persisting this anywhere in the Kafka topic. Um, um, now, let's, let's take a look on the, the next one. So rating topology, that would be something interesting. Something interesting is um, when I look into this uh, rating streams, uh, we need to get some data in, right? So in this case, we're reading data from our ratings topic. So our data is produced in the format of integer, oh, sorry, long as a key, and the rating as our uh, the value. Remember, we have a schema that already represents this rating, and our specific, our survey would be able to deserialize. So in this case, I would do, um, um, next thing is that, where is it? Uh, going back to test. A ratings average table. So this is where we need to calculate uh, running average for rating. How we can do this? Very simple. We have a number of ratings within the time and we have a, the sum of these ratings. We have a sum and we divide by number of uh, ratings that we have running average. It's not super sophisticated algorithm that allows you to calculate rating, just simply running average. So let's take a look how we implement this. Um, I um, actually talk about this approach uh, in very details if you do into if you go in Kafka tutorials and you can find this um, there is a calculate running average Kafka tutorial in this tutorial I explain why uh, you should follow the pattern that uh, we follow here instead of just getting count and after that do some and after that do another operation to divide this because it would be not a correct result you will see the duplicates and the, you will get incorrect results so a correct result is to use an aggregate and we're using some intermediate object to as our storage now, here's some interesting thing will happen. So since it's aggregate um, uh, method, will need to store uh, intermediate results somewhere. Um, and uh, this intermediate result um, <clears throat> will be, uh, um, needs to be persistent. So in this case, we need to have this object that also have a serializer, deserializer. So this y can in sum, it's also our avro object. If you remember, from a uh, from few steps back, I do have count and sum that will include count and sum. This is just for solely um, for my purpose of uh, uh, simplicity. I didn't want to have a custom serializer or maybe some people are using JSON, like all in, Avro, all the things. Now, the... Um, we use this also, we materialize this as a, as a, as a, as a store. And uh, uh, after that, we store this average ratings into uh, this store. And uh, for uh, how it's called, in order to uh, preserve these results, we also put intermediate um, results into Kafka topic. So let's run this test. Let's run this uh, test and see uh, how our topology look like. And as a test, see? So what I wanted to check, I want to check if I would um, have a rating for uh, lethal, we a a lethal, lethal weapon, uh, 362, I would put the 10 and uh, 8. So I expect the average rating would be 9. So and when I run this, um, I will get topology and we will take a look on this topology in, in, uh, in a second. So validate it, uh, it's a successfully run, um, and um, this is our topology. This is our, um, this is our topologies. Two subtopologies. One subtopology will be responsible for reading ratings, and other subtopology will be responsible to, to calculating this uh, aggregation. So let me show you. Um, I will just, it's a, going in into um, topology visualizer. So a couple things. We have a ratings topics. We're reading this. We do some transformation of these ratings. In this particular case, uh, I guess um, we are doing the um, rating processor. <coughs> Uh, which we, we, we're making sure that um, 
the keys is chosen correctly, so we do another map operation. Um, this operation is not uh, requires a repartition because I guess Kafka Stream is smart enough to not doing this because the keys was the same essentially. Now this is our aggregate store where we're putting this uh, result of the um, grouping of this um, uh, b based on key. So we can also um, include this one and after that there is, uh, sorry, no, 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 that was a grouping and uh, this was a our aggregate store that was store intermediate results and after that result of this will land in average ratings topic, okay? So um, we have our ratings, we're reading those, we're creating another topic of this that will include uh, average ratings just for, for, to save, to save this. And uh, those average rating will not have movie, or it, or it will, will, will it? Um, based on key, third day long. No, it's just like intermediate. It will not have anything, to, uh, anything to do with the. Um, the only thing that we need to have here is um, where is the key? Uh, average rating. This is our key, and. Yeah, so average will include movie ID and average rating. Now, um, in the third step, we need to do a join between our movies and our average rating. So in this case, we do have, I do have this end-to-end, um, -end, I call it end-to-end, -end, that includes all steps of topologies, but essentially, um, there's a rated movie table that will take a um, movies table. Uh, it will join those with the rating average and uh, using this value joiner that will create this uh, rated movie. So we do have a movies table, we do have a, a stream of average ratings, and after that we're joining those together, <clears throat> and after that we're putting this result into Kafka topic. So let me do this real quick and show you how this application would look like, and I will, I will check some comments in, in a second. <clears throat> streams, uh, run stream. Now, let's take a look. Uh, we're going, 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 just, uh, just too many, um, too many serializers that we have. And now we have a topology one. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Topologies, and um, I'm going here. Update. So we do have um, <laughs> a little bit of mess here, but it's okay as long as we get the right result. So we do have a subtopology with ratings. We do have some topology with movies. This is subtopology that deals with the um, um, with the movies. Uh, where's my uh, movie table? Where's my movie store? So this, uh, this one thing goes into movie store, another one it goes into joiner that we will be join um, rated movies. So actually, this state store can be exposed as the um, as the API source, but we're not gonna go um, to this route. I want to show you how we can do this with uh, some other tools. Um, and after that, as a result, we will have a they would be merged, and after that it will turn it into stream, and I will uh, be able to send this into Kafka, um, in Kafka topic. So essentially, in the rated movies topic, I should get a result. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, th th that's the that's topology. So, um, the reason for that, it looks weird, however, um, it's thanks to, um, thanks to Kafka streams, um, and the Kafka streams DSL, all these things are look kind of weird, and uh, but you can definitely simplify this if you're using this processor, um, um, processor API, and uh, you can definitely simplify this topology. You can do multiple things as a part of one processor node rather than relying on how certain APIs will turn out. Um, there is there are some ways how we can optimize this, and I want to explore a little bit optimization in maybe in the future uh, live streams. So make sure subscribe to get those as well in future. Um, um, 
how to print out topologies? This is a very good uh, question, uh, Martin. Um, um, so in this case, uh, there is a method in topology that called um, topology.describe. So topology.describe gives you text uh, description of uh, topology. If you do describe to string, and uh, you will get uh, this. So, but essentially, this is what uh, what you need to call. Once you run the builder dot build, you can do topology dot describe, and you will get the text representation. And again, uh, bookmark this um, topology uh, Kafka Streams Visualizer, incredible useful tool. And there's a link in this one in the document that I showed you. Um, and uh, explore applications. That what we do here and uh, the uh, uh, visualizer. Now, next thing is that uh, we're going into the world of... <clears throat> um, let's run this test once again. Just make sure application still works. Awesome. Um, Gradle W ratings test. It runs uh, all this topology, all good, everything works. Next thing, we need to bring this back to uh, to our scaffold jazz. Um, so we're going into scaffold. Uh, we're doing uncomment um, this one, um, uncomment uh, this one, and now we need to fix the secret. Remember, it's not the template anymore. It's going to be a secret. Just do refactor. Um, and uh, before I just go there, let me see if I can do, since there's no consumers, pay attention, there's no consumers here, uh, here we will see how we can process this. Now, um, rating processor secret. Now, we do have a, our Kafka configuration here. We've correct a, um, correct connections. Let's see if we can uh, change that. And we do rating processor secret. Uh, we insert Kafka scheme registry, all these nice bits. Um, make sure that the replication factor is three for default topics, otherwise it will fail. Um, and some of the configuration for my topics, like in this case ratings, movies, average ratings, all this kind of stuff um, that will be uh, available, available there. So um, I'm going into um, just do scan run. So in this case, it will build um, uh, images and restart those um, in um, in Confluent Cloud, and we can explore some of the cool bits around this. All right, um, some people have to drop off. Thank you so much for being a part of live streams. Three, two, thanks. Um, uh, check this out, recording. Check this out, other. Um, other, <laughs> other, other uh, episodes. Um, Vinay, thank you so much. Also, to try this uh, run afterwards. If you hit some problems, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and uh, see how this will go. Um, um, oh wow! It's almost midnight in India. <laughs> Thank you again for people who uh, join in this time zone. Um, I'm trying to create this accommodating time zone that uh, will be uh, useful for everyone to join. But hey, sometimes it's, uh, it's not simple. It's not simple, people. All right. Now the um, application is building. Now it will be pushing some of this uh, into uh, Docker Hub. Um, and it will, um, will be available like very soon, very, very soon. Uh, okay, now K9S. Um, uh, let's see if application is up and running. Uh, container creating. Application starts. Successfully logged in. And here we go. Now, let's take a look on this side of things. Now, you have this rating processor. This is my application. And um, it is right now uh, start consuming messages. And it's very interesting to see what is going on here. Um, uh, come on. It's loading, loading, loading. 
and the rating processor. I think it's not it's not uh, it's not running. So right now it's just like uh, figuring out like where everything. And uh, once it's switched to running mode, we will start seeing this is very interesting thing called um, consumer lag. Um, and uh, very very soon, hopefully. I'm waiting. Come on, where is it? Um, Waiting, resetting, offset to partition. I don't see why it is, uh, if it's switched to running mode. Um, let's see. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, in, it's running. Um, and let's see if we do have a, yes, that's what I wanted to see. Um, so no uh, messages, like uh, no messages behind. And let's catch up real quick. So it catch up real quick. It does uh, some um, some cool, interesting things. But we are interested in this average rating, right? We are interested if we can get all this. Um, <clears throat> we're going into this. Uh, uh, let's see if we will be able to see something. And again, we do, but average ratings. Um, and I was talking about the rated movies. That was I'm interested in. And uh, it's supposed to be like um, um, just like let's let's do update. So rated movies are landing in this uh, topic. Let's see data flow. Uh, rated movies. Um, let's see if it uh, it does the right thing. It looks it does. It looks like like it's working, right? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It looks like it's working. Like it does something with this. Um, and uh, thirty nine. Uh, interesting. Is it stuck? Because it, uh, if it's stuck, it would be not fun. Uh, let's see if my... No, it, 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 it still does something, right? So I see it still does something. Now it's a whole mess of these noodles in, um, in this topology. But uh, there's a couple things here. There's my rat ratings processor that reading messages from movies and reading messages from ratings. Um, and after that, we'll produce some of the uh, some of the data and some repartition topics and things like that. But why this average rating is not working? I don't, um, that's, it is supposed to be, uh, not average rating, uh, rated movies. So rated movies, for some reasons, no one is producing to this one. Um, that's, um, that's something interesting. Let's let's wait. Maybe it uh, just takes some time to uh, to catch up. Um, so let's see. Rating processor still has uh, some messages behind. No, it works. It works. It does work. Um, and writing some messages. And uh, let's do something. Let's do something else. So let's assume. Let's assume everything works, right? Let's assume everything. Um, it's not. It's not done yet. We have a uh, one last thing to t to test. Um, one last thing to test. Now we need to have a this. We have this stream of this rated movies somewhere. I promise you, they, they, it, it is somewhere. Um, but now I need to turn them into something that we can use. So in this particular case, I will be using Key SQL to um, to read those data. And uh, let's create this materialized view uh, for this. So um, materialized view, so we can query, so we can query by ID or query by title or something like that. So in this case. I will go in case SQL here. I just go editor and create a stream. So, <coughs> because I don't want to um, create all these fields manually, uh, I will just tell uh, case SQL to create this stream and uh, infer uh, the schema from Avro. And also, I want to do from earliest. So, it will. Um, and now I do have a rated movie doesn't exist in schema registry. Let's see, for some reasons. I messed up somewhere. Value, ratings value, rated movie value. So it's there. 
so why it is not... Um, let's read this message once again. Maybe there is a um, KSQL DB uh, issue with this. Let's see. Uh, earliest, earliest, run query. Um, topic uh, itself, maybe, um, maybe there is a um, security, maybe ACL is not configured. So I assume it might be ACL. So I came prepared with this um, cool uh, command line, uh, cool command line magic. Let's see if I can uh, fix this. Uh, with this. <clears throat> if I will be able to enable those ACLs. All right, and um, hopefully this help. Otherwise, I don't know. I need to investigate this myself. Run query. Rated movie doesn't exist. Schema for message value. Hmm. Rated uh, for some reasons. Uh, let's see. Rated um, rated movies is still there. Schema. Schema is also there. Um, let's see if I do have messages. Ah, okay, rated dash movies. Okay, maybe, yeah, that's correct. Um, um, so I do have a, and my topic was, what? Kafka topic, thank you. Um, that's very useful to have a friends in the chat, um, <laughs> but still doesn't work. Um, let's see, uh, topics, rated movies. Rated movies, okay. But uh, the Kafka topic, rated movies. Uh huh. Maybe this. Okay. So uh, case sensitivity. Uh, that's our jazz. Now let's see if this uh, rated movie streams. Let's do a query stream. And we should be able to see these uh, movies uh, coming somewhere. Yep, uh, all these movies in C, since KSQL DB was able to infer the schema, it is outputting here. Yep, that's, um, that's pretty cool. So in my, um, I need to fix this in my uh, doc. I will update this. People who are watching this in the future, uh, they will not have this problem um, in, uh, in their lives because we will fix this. And it's going to be um, like this, rated movies. Now, <laughs> next thing is that uh, I would like to create another um, uh, materialized view on top of this stream. So it will accumulate this result. So I will be able to query this from, uh, from any application, basically. So I will go ahead here and I just do uh, this. Um, let's let's talk about this. Now we have uh, this uh, table rated movie view from. Uh, this looks weird. Uh, title as title release year movie ID current rating from rated movie stream and after that uh, image changes. Okay. Earliest run query. And okay, success. Uh, I will update this over here. Now, so what I can do here, so if I'll do and um, rated movie, query table. I'm not interested in it changes, but I'm interested in, you know what, in, in what? You know what I'm talking about. So rated movies view where title equals die hard. Huh? Huh? All right, so let's run this and see if we get the result. And we get the result immediately because we do have a table, like in your, you know, SQL things. Uh, so 
Nice. Okay, so we do have a, a rating 7 to 35. Okay, what's your favorite movie? Christmas favorite movie? Another one. Um, uh, another one. It's a little bit better rating, right? 7.6. Um, what is another Christmas movie? Um, I promise I will. I will. I promised that I will uh, show you how you can do um, uh, home alone. Uh, run query. Home alone. Also nice rating. Um, Christmas Carol. I'm not sure actually if I have it. It's a great movie with the um, Patrick Stewart. Uh, that was great. Um, uh, Um, I believe I don't have it. I don't have it here. So, uh, what was the another one? Um, uh, uh, Christmas vacation. Let me see if I do have actually this, um, uh, if I have it in my, if I have it in my, in my database. Movies um, in the in the generator, CRC main resources, movies that, and I'll do a vacation. No, no vacation. So essentially, Die Hard, a Lethal Weapon, and uh, Home Alone. That's what I have for you today, folks. Um, <laughs> um, uh, die Hard, once again. And uh, the cool thing is this, this materialized view is actually, um, it will be constantly updated. Uh, this materialized view will be constantly um, updated with the, you see, the rating is changing um, and it's getting into, like, into something better, right? That's, um, that's Santa Claus. Okay, let me see if I have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it. I should be, um, I should be better prepared for this. Uh, but hey, that's my three f most, most, um, most favorite uh, Christmas movies that I have um, <laughs> for you. It's a Die Hard. Lethal Weapon and the Home Alone. Um, there's another one, Russian one, but I also don't have it here. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I keep you, I keep you, your life. Uh, it's great to hear. Um, <laughs> special thanks is a great example of Christmas mood. That's what I do. Christmas mood and uh, um, hopefully Happy New Year. Um, thanks for the help of, of this, um, Rahul. Thanks for pointing out some of the typos. It's always great uh, to um, to have someone who can uh, do this, uh, who can help me here. All right, <laughs> a little bit of magic. Okay, so let's um, let's recap. Let's recap what we're doing here. So what what happened here? So first of all, um, I would suggest you to. Um, if you want, again, if you want, um, you can watch this again. This is the link to our documentation, or at least it's a, like, it's a vague <laughs> version of documentation that at least allows you to, um, to follow along and see where, where everything is going. So essentially, we started with the tools that need to be installed, how we get the code, how to get Kubernetes. Oh, we didn't do this, one more thing. So let's do this quickly, really quickly. Um, so we will, um, so let's do this. I will try to, that's going to be nice. Okay. Let's do this one. So I will just do K, um, scale, um, uh, K S S S, um, stateful set. I will just do K S S S, uh, movie. Movie generator. I will just do three more replicas. Uh, K9S. And see if I will be able to run this. Three more replicas. And I'll, let's see if my... Um, 
if my uh, consumer lag will grow. So if I go here, rating processor, and let's, uh, let's see for a while. Let's see and see um, if my consumer lag will grow. So I increase number of producers. So um, each producer will generate um, uh, the same, like the amount of data that is, it produces. Um, let's see if, uh, uh, looks like it's working, movies generator writing something, you know, they, uh, um, my stuff is going in. <clears throat> now you see, there's a, some significant number of messages behind. You see, my consumer is, can produce, uh, can consume those, but not that fast. So what about we are include, increase number of uh, processors? So I'll just do KSS uh, rating um, processor with number replicas two, and let's see uh, how this magic will happen um, if it will happen. It's so pending. There might be not enough resources on my cluster, which is totally fine. I can do this. I'll just do scale, uh, not scale, resize. <clears throat> So, uh, live streams cluster, US East one. Um, is it also USS one? Not found. Um, um, pop, 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 pop. Not US one. Um, uh, let's see. I, I'm pretty sure that um, G Cloud. Um, Zone ES one C ES is one C. Um, let me let me see if I'm running this in the right zone. Um, I need to have this just like a script <laughs> in uh, make. Uh, where's my make file? Um, mum, 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 mum. Where are we running this uh, zone? Um, US East C. Okay. And the cluster name is uh, cluster name, live streams workshop. Okay. Uh, res uh, number of nodes. Okay. I uh, just do size num notice. Um, live streams workshop. I'm sorry. Uh huh. Now we're increasing the pool. So first of all, application is suffering. However, um, let's uh, let's take a look on cluster overview and see. Um, so it's still loading production and it's not, it's not like that big, but still growing. So essentially Confluent Cloud gets you covered. So everything is, is, is withholding, but consumer is struggling. See, application is struggling. This, um, the rated movies consumer. So we need to help a bit. So we need to help a little bit and uh, that's why we are K9S. So why it is pending? <clears throat> um, let's see, describe why it is pending. There might be some not enough resources, insufficient CPU. Um, pulling. Okay, yeah, so the exactly uh, uh, what I was expecting, this um, not enough resources. So let's take a look um, into, um, so rejoining the group, um, it's consumer joined, we just uh, state store restored, uh, ready to run, and let's take a look how fast this will help to um, reduce the number of, 
See? I just add another processor and it helps significantly with the, um, with the consumption. See? We're going in. We're going in. We're going in hot. And um, see, this number will just drop. This number will drop. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, it's a, there's a, um, you can enjoy multiple things. For example, you can enjoy watching how the fire is burning, or you can watch how you know some water flows and also you can enjoy the grab a grab a drink and enjoy watching how the kafka streams crashes this consumer lag so highly recommend uh, this uh, this exercise uh play around the source so, source code is there as you can see i uh, get the same same stuff that you might get play around with this uh, let me know how it works i will be here in the Confluent the YouTube channel almost every Tuesday. Bring your questions, bring your friends, bring your family. Uh, we will talk about Kafka and stream processing. We're going to be talking about some other cool stuff. I really appreciate for those, those people who stayed with me uh, in this live stream. Um, hopefully, I teach you something or at least I show you something exciting. And uh, um, you can use this knowledge to build your awesome apps. Um, should we do this kind of like a challenge? Like, I don't know, like, a, I will send you some present if you build some awesome app in uh, Confluent Cloud and Kubernetes. And after that, I will uh, uh, showcase this for um, uh, one of the live streams. How about that? So if you build some cool app and send this to me and show me, um, that would be awesome. And it's, it's, it's great. Now... Um, Clarification about the source uh, about this uh, code. Um, it's it's available until December, twenty twenty one. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, cool. So play around. Let me know how it goes. Let me kill this. And uh, by now you already know that uh, my name is Victor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day.